Welcome to the Statistic in EDE YouTube channel. Today I want to show you how to include data in your package. We looked at how to create our packages in previous videos and now we want to see how to add data to a package which can be a very useful ingredient and there are also pure data packages that can also be useful. But today we'll have a custom function to make for a more interesting use case. So I'm creating a new project. You can um, see another video how to create an R package in two minutes in R Studio, um, where I do this in more detail. I'm using the new project menu um, and then the R package using DevTools as a project type. DevTools gives us some helper functions which are very useful and we call the package in house calc. I'm using camel case here for the package name and then um, just create the project. You could change um, the subdirectory that your package um, will get by using this browse button, but I'm not changing that now. So I'm creating the package. You see um, a lot of things happening here. And then we have this basic file structure that I won't explain in detail now. Um, we've gone over this in previous videos, but we've got this R subfolder and it's empty and we have no data in this package at the moment. So I have a helper file so that I don't have to type everything out now while making this video with some helper functions, but this is not part of the package, so I'll copy it over. So first of all, um, let's see what kind of data we want to have and what kind of function we want to have. So I have code prepared that creates sample data that is made from random draws, but with different scales for for each of the five variables that we create. These are customer qualities, we keep it secret which type of qualities this company measures, but they will calculate a score from these customer qualities. So let's create this data set. Um, so it's got 100 observations or 100 customers and it contains five qualities that were measured for these customers. Okay, so this is the data set. And now we have a function to calculate a customer score from this data set. So here's the function code. So let's say this is in-house code um, that will not be published outside of the company, but this way of calculation shall be available for analysts via this R package that we're creating. It takes an argument data and then the variable names, the customer qualities are hard coded. So they, these are not meant to be um, flexible, but this is an in-house um, fixed definition of variable names that we will stick to. But the data set is a function parameter that we can use. Um, I won't define this function now in the global environment because that's bad practice during package creation, but instead We'll do it the right way. Um, I'm loading the DevTools package because that has some helper functions and use this gets loaded along the DevTools package and now we can create a file that contains our function. Use all and I'm calling it in-house calc just like the function that I want to put in this file. So this file is now put in the R subfolder but it's empty at the moment. This helper file is not part of the package, so I copy the function over um, to this file and save it. And now we have this function that we can use. So um, it creates a customer score and it gives different weights to these five customer qualities. The first variable is the most important one. Um, with a weight of 5 and then we go down from 4, 3, 2, 1. So different weights and because the variables are on different scales we use the scale function to eliminate this scale effect and I provided the argument set equals false to avoid negative values. So all the values will be positive. Now it's good practice to not define this function in the global environment. Instead we'll use this build tab that is only present in our studio projects that are defined as packages. We have this build more menu entry and we can load all. Um, and now we go back to the global environment. The data set is available, but 
the function is not defined in the global environment, but we should be able to use it, and we use it this way. Um, we add a variable customer score to our data set and we use this in-house calc function so the analyst using the package does not need to worry about how to about the details how to calculate this customer score. So we can run this function and you see the data set now has a new variable customer score and we can create, um, look at a summary of this data and you see it's scaled to a range of 100. We do that in this line of code after we apply the weights and use the scale function. So the maximum is 100, the minimum is not quite zero because um, that's not part of the data but the theoretical range is from 0 to 100. Um, the scale function creates attributes which we strip here and then we explicitly return the customer score. The return statement is optional, I could just have typed customer score. Right, so now we can use the function. The function um, is not documented yet, so let's quickly add documentation to the function. Um, I prepared this. You can see that in another video, how to include um, documentation. You can always use this. Insert our oxygen skeleton function um, and then fill in the skeleton, but now I prepared that already to have function documentation. I save the script again and then we can go to build more and document and then we'll quickly load the function again and now we should have documentation to this function as well. The function is called in-house calc so let's have a look and indeed we have documentation now. But this function needs a data set and the data set is now not part of the package. I happen to have it in my global environment um, but a colleague that starts using the package and wants to learn how to use this customer score calculation may not have access to the data set. Of course you can specify a file path somewhere um, or have the colleague download the data from some place but this um, storage um, file path may change in the future so it's more convenient to directly include an example data set in the package so that the function can always be tried out without forcing any new colleague to um, search for the data first. So I'll quickly remove this customer score variable again in-house data dollar customer score sign now to delete the variable um, and now we want to make this data set part of the package and we can use another convenience function from the use this package use underscore data and we just provide the name of the file the, um, the object in-house data the data set so um, I just use this convenience function use data in-house data and you see the use this package helps us a lot um, it manipulates the description it creates a subfolder data. We can see that in the files tab. It wasn't there before. Um, and it saves the data set to that folder. It's an RDA, R internal file format. Um, so a few tick marks are shown here in the console for what use this did for us. But what it didn't do is document our data. So there's a link to the excellent R packages book by Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan that I can recommend. Um, but it tells us with this red star, this is not done yet, we must document our data. So this cannot be automated, so it's good practice to call that file that contains data documentation data.r. So we can use another use this convenience function use r data and it creates this file but it's empty and here we have to add the documentation for our data set. So let's do that. I prepared that in advance and this is the documentation. So it looks a little bit different to function documentation that you've seen before in a previous video and also in this video here um, with the R oxygen skeleton. This looks a little bit different. It's got a title and a description and then it's got these special tags format and then describe and a list with items which correspond to the variables of the data set. We can also specify a source, which is usually a URL, but here I just put created in-house to serve as an, as an example. 
And then, for examples, we can show how to access the dataset by specifying data and the name of the dataset. What is important here is we have no function, we have no real R code in this file, just the documentation, the R oxygen tags that all start with a hash and a single quotation mark. But the last line of this file without this R oxygen comment um, symbol hash and single quotation mark is the name of the dataset just quoted. So this is very important. The name of the dataset is in-house data. So we have to insert this line so that um, our studio and our oxygen, the package, can relate this documentation to the actual data set. We store this, and now we can go back to the build tab um, that we have in our studio projects that are defined as packages, and we can go to document again, and you see the documentation is updated. We call load all again, and now we can see if the data is indeed included in the package. I remove the object in-house data, and now I call data in-house data. And you see it gets loaded and it is available now. And now we could again use this function um, in-house calc to calculate the customer score, which is not part of the data set. We just have the five qualities. We can run this function again and the customer score is calculated again. There's one difference between this development version um, of the package. We're just working with our basic files now and we haven't installed the package yet. So there's a difference between this development version and the actual installed package and that is how the data is loaded. You saw when I loaded the data, it was loaded immediately and fully available. When I install the package, let's do that, build, install and restart. See, this is a small package, so it's quite fast. Um, I remove the object in-house data again, and then call data in-house data again to make it available again. And we can also do that without the quotation marks unquoted. And now you see it's lazily loaded. So um, basically R tells us, okay, you want to access this data set. It is available but it is not loaded in memory yet. This is called lazy loading of datasets. So the RAM is not taken. It's a small dataset, but you could have larger data. So the memory is not actually occupied yet. And R is waiting for us to actually use the data to make it fully available. So when I, for example, use the SDR function here down in the console to look at the structure of this dataset, SDR in-house data, I haven't even executed the command and now R knows and our studio knows that we want to access the data, so it is now fully available. Right, let's see if the documentation is there as well. Question mark, in-house data on the console, and indeed we get a help page for this data set. So this data.r file contains the documentation, and this is what the documentation actually looks like. Um, we have a title, a description, a usage, and then the format gives us an overview of the variables and what they correspond to. So we keep the customer quality secret here, but at least it is described that we have five customer quality variables in this data set, and we can use that to showcase our customer score calculation. That was pretty much it for today. I hope you found it interesting. Um, by the way, this was just about data that we want to make accessible to the user. You could also have packages with internal data that is not visible to the outside user, but that you need for some internal functions. How to do that, you can find in the R Packages book by Hadley Wickham and Jenny Bryan that already appeared in this video and that you can read online for free. You don't need to buy it. And also raw data is described there, how to implement that in your package. But I think what I showed you today is by far the most common form. Um, here it was combined with an in-house function that needs a specific type of data set um, to be showcased. But you could also think of pure data packages. There are pure data packages, for example, the great gapminder package, but also in base R you have the data sets package. So you could type help package equals datasets and it gives you an overview 
and you see um, it contains a variety of datasets and we can use library help equals datasets to get an overview um, and it contains a lot of mostly small datasets that we can use for coding examples. Also we could type data package equals and let's use our package in-house calc. That's another way of getting an overview and it gives us this simple page with the one data set that we now included in our package and that is displayed just as in other R packages so it makes full use of R's help pages and documentation. That was it for today. All the best for your own package development and including your data sets. Have fun. See you next time. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. See you next time. Ciao.